The room temperature electrical conductivity of a silicon specimen is 5.93 times 10 to the negative 3 inverse ohm meters. The hole concentration is known to be 7 times 10 to the 17th inverse meters cubed. Using the hole and electron mobilities for silicon in the table below, compute the electron concentration. For part B, on the basis of the result in part A, is the specimen intrinsic, n-type extrinsic, or p-type extrinsic, and why? Maybe to begin with, we should recall that the total electrical conductivity, right here, is actually equal to two components. We have whatever's coming from the electrons, and whatever component is coming from the holes in a material. Right? Now let's take a look at the units. The conductivity, we know that it has units of inverse ohm meters, which is 1 over ohms times meters. Therefore, each one of these terms should give us the same thing, 1 over ohm meters. However, if you look at n, n and p are both concentrations, so that has a unit of 1 over meters cubed. Meanwhile, this is the absolute value of the fundamental charge of an electron, so that has units of coulombs. And in this mobility, we see in the table that it has meter squared per volt second. Meter squared per volt second. Well, we need to recall that a coulomb per volt second equals 1 over omega and ohm, right? So we can rewrite this as 1 over meters cubed, 1 over ohms, and meters squared. Meters squared will cancel, that will cancel, and sure enough, each one of these terms, both the component coming from electrons as well as holes, has the correct units of 1 over ohm meters. Let's go ahead and rewrite this expression solving for n, since that's what we're asked to solve for. n will be the total electrical conductivity minus the whole component divided by the fundamental charge of an electron times the mobility of an electron. Let's punch in values. When I punch these into the calculator, I find that the concentration of electrons should equal 1.39 times 10 to the 16th per meter cubed. Now that we have that, we can go ahead and move on to part B. Part B says, based on the values that you got in part A, is the sample intrinsic, extrinsic, n-type, or extrinsic p-type? Well, anytime you do this, you really need to compare the number of holes to the number of electrons. Intrinsic, n is about equal to p, meaning there should be roughly the same amount. Extrinsic, um, n type, then you should have n being greater than p, and extrinsic, p type, you should have p being greater than n. In this case, n equals 1.36 times 10 to the 16th per meter cubed, whereas p equals 7 times 10 to the 17th per meter cubed. So in this case, there's actually many more holes than there are electrons. Therefore, we can say p is greater than n. It must be a p-type extrinsic.